Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to jump into solving quadratics by graphing. Um, this is going to sound, it's going to seem a lot like lesson two, and it is exactly like lesson two, except for one little piece that's added. Now, I'm going to get into the nuts and bolts of it here. So the beginning is going to be a little slow, but then we're going to move a little quicker. So a quadratic has the general form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. To graph, we found the middle of the parabola, right? Lessons, that's lesson one. And then the vertex, again, lesson one. From this lesson on, we will use the following form of a quadratic. It's gonna be a very minor change. Notice that ax squared plus bx plus c is still the same, but it's not an equal to y this time, it's gonna be equal to zero. When you see a quadratic equal to zero, that means we are solving the quadratic. What x value will give me zero for y? Okay. On a graph, y equals zero anywhere on the x axis. That's the horizontal axis. Therefore, when we are solving a quadratic, we are looking for the x intercepts. Okay. That's any place where the graph crosses the x axis. All right. So the x intercepts is another word for the solution. So there's four terms that all mean the same thing when it comes to solving quadratics. Solutions and x-intercepts mean the same thing. Those are the two I use the most, but there are two other words that you will need to know, roots and zeros. All right, so all of those things mean the same thing. All right, so when I ask you to find the solutions, I'm also asking you to find the x-intercepts, the roots, and the zeros, right? So we're gonna jump right in and do a problem. Solve by graphing, okay? So again, this is very similar. Actually, it's exactly what we're gonna do in lesson two or what we did in lesson two. So negative B over two A, B is negative six, A is one. Negative negative six is positive six over two, X equals three. Just to be consistent, I'm going to put that axis of symmetry there. Go ahead and find the vertex. So three, and then I got to find what y value is. So three squared minus six times three plus eight. So that's nine minus 18 plus eight. So that's negative nine plus eight. That's negative one. So three negative one is my vertex. And now I'm gonna make my table with three negative one in the middle. Two smaller, two bigger. Again, nothing different here. One, I'm gonna do one squared is one, six times one is six plus eight. So one minus six is negative five plus eight is three. So five is also three. I'm gonna do two, two squared, uh, minus six times two plus eight. So that's four minus 12 plus eight. That's negative eight plus eight. That's zero, which means this is zero. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and plot those. Write one up three, write two up zero, write four up zero, write five up three. So you might be thinking, well, what's new here? Nothing. Literally nothing is new at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. Oh, that's not great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and erase my graph and make sure it is in the right spot, leaving everything else there. So negative three, real quick. Sorry. There we go. All right, after graphing, how many times does the parabola cross the x-axis? Well, it crosses twice, right? That means that this equation has two solutions. The number of times it crosses the x-axis, which is right here, 
That is where you find your solutions, okay? The solutions are x equals two and x equals four. The specific places where they cross are my solutions. So two and four. If you look at the table that we created, look at the y values corresponding to those solutions. So x equals two, x equals four, look at the y values. Okay, we're looking for where y equals zero, right? That is what we're doing new here, it's just solving. So finding where it crosses the x-axis is essentially what we're doing here. All right, so we're gonna solve, yeah, what? A few more, okay? So a little work here. Yes, unfortunately the work does not stop. The good news is it's all the same. Negative four over negative two is positive two, okay? So positive two, let's go ahead and find the y part. So two squared is four, that negative is still there, so negative four. Four times two is eight, so negative four plus eight is four. Four minus four is zero. So two zero is my vertex. Put that right there in the middle. Two smaller, two bigger. Uh, I'm going to do zero. It's pretty easy. Zero plus zero minus four is negative four, which means four is negative four. One squared is one. Negative one plus four is three. Three minus four is negative one. So one negative one, zero negative four, three negative one, four negative four. Okay. How many solutions does this one have? It's only got one, right? Let's scroll down here a little bit. It's only got one solution, right? Because it only crosses one time. Um, what are the solutions? It would be x equals two, okay? Let's clear that out of the way. Uh, x squared plus two x plus three change colors here. X equals negative B over 2A. B is 2, A is 1. So it's negative 2 over positive 2. That's negative 1, right? And then plug negative 1 in. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1 plus 3 is 2. So negative one, two is my vertex. Two smaller would be negative two and negative three. Two bigger would be zero and one. I like zero, zero is easy. Zero plus zero plus three is three. So this is also three. One plus two is three. Three plus three is six. So negative one, oh, I already got that one. Zero, three. Negative two, three, one, six, negative three, six. Okay, how many solutions does this one have? Hopefully you see that there are none, right? It never crosses the x-axis. There are no solutions to this one. Okay, so what are the solutions? Well, there aren't any, okay? What that means is if I cannot, find, there's no x value that I could put in that would make the y value zero. That's what that's saying, okay? so. You've seen all three situations. The first one on the front page had two solutions. The, um, the two on the back here so far, one had one solution and the other one had no solutions. Those are the three possibilities. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm gonna tell you that there are some major disadvantages to graphing. So we're gonna go ahead and solve this one to kind of see some of the disadvantages. So X equals negative B over two A. So eight, negative two, that's negative eight over negative four. X equals two. Put two in for X, I get four times negative two is negative eight. Eight times two is 16. So negative eight plus 16 is eight. Eight minus five is three. All right, so two. Three. 
three. Oops, back it up here. Making a table now. Two, three. Two smaller would be one and zero. Two bigger, three and four. Zero plus zero minus five is negative five. One squared is one times negative two is negative two. Plus eight is six. Six minus five is one. So one, one, zero, negative five. Three, one, four, negative five. Okay, so you're like, okay, there's nothing really too hard about that. Here's the part that's tricky. How many solutions does this have? A lot of people are gonna say zero. That's not true. How many times does it cross the x-axis? How many times does it cross here? Well, it crosses twice, right? It crosses here and it crosses here. What are those solutions? We don't know. They're not good numbers. Right. This example shows two major disadvantages to solving by graphing. One, it's time consuming. Each problem takes about five minutes. And two, you're not able to find the solutions in some problems because the parabola doesn't cross the x-axis at nice points, which is a little foreshadowing. I'm going to show you four other ways to solve a quadratic in the next few videos. Okay, but for now, that's the end of this video and the end of graphing.